have sailed across the oceans, past the cities and the farms, on a never-ending quest for something new. But the only thing that mattered were the four days in your arms, and it all fades away, but you. think that torture is needed, even if I was a spy, which I'm not saying I am, then my training would teach me to withstand said torture, so I really don't think it's going to have any kind of effect on this kind of juncture, just... Whoa, 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 wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. Morgan, the truth is... The truth is, I am part of a joint NCA-CIA Black Ops team that is stationed here in Burbank. I have a level 6 clearance, and my codename is Charles Carmichael. I'm a spy, buddy. Uh, you remember that thing I told you about not freaking out? Well, you're kind of doing it, and you really don't need to in this moment. Two? Wait, two minutes? What can they possibly see in two? I mean, that's hardly any time at all. <laughs> By the time I say, hello, my name is, my monologue's from, it'll be over. I'll be lucky to get a line out. To, to feel anything except except hysteria and panic. I, I'm not a computer. I can't just feel on cue, perform in an instant. That's, that's unartistic. It's inhumane. I, I'd have to cut my monologue to shreds. Won't make sense. The rhythms will be off. I mean, that's not an audition. That's an assembly line. Next, 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 next. <laughs> you know what? Forget it. I quit. I'm canceling. What kind of a career is that? Oh, wait a minute. Man, what am I doing? I've got to make this work for me. I can do this. Okay, two minutes? Sure, sure, okay. If that's what they want, then that's what they'll get. And I won't cut my monologue. No, I'll condense. I'll pick up the pace, give them more for their money. You want two minutes? Okay, okay, coming right up. Two minutes? But fasten up your seatbelts. It's gonna be a quick and bumpy ride. <laughs> you said let's talk truthfully. Unsparingly truthfully. Shamelessly even. Well, let's have it. It's no longer a secret that I love you. I... I love you, John. Well, I suppose it never really was. <laughs> I remember the long afternoons of our childhood where I had to stay indoors and practice my music and I would hear your friends calling you, Johnny, Johnny. How it, it went through me to, to hear your name called. And, and I would rush to the window just to watch you jump over the porch railing and take off down the street. <laughs> Did you know that I, 
I stood at a distance just to keep inside of your, your red sweater as you raced about that vacant lot you used to play in. It began that early, this, this affliction of loam. It has never let go of me since, but kept on growing and growing and growing. I lived right next door to you my entire life, a weak and divided person who stood in awe of your singleness and your strength. That's my story. But I do wish you would tell me, why did it never happen between us? Where, where did I fail? Why did you come almost close enough and no closer? Foul 
wild devil, for God's sake, hence and trouble us not. Thou hast made the happy earth thy hell, filled it with cursing cries and deep exclaims. If thou doth delight to view thy heinous deeds, behold a pattern of thy butcheries. O oh, gentlemen, see, see dead Henry's wounds. Open their congealed mouths as they bleed afresh. Blush, blush thou lump of foul deformity, for tis thy presence that exhales this blood from cold and empty veins where no blood dwells. Thy deeds, inhuman and unnatural, provokes this deluge most unnatural. O oh God, revenge his death! O oh earth, which this blood drinks to revenge his death! Either heaven with lightning struck the murderer dead, or earth gape open wide and eat him quick as thou dost drink this good king's blood, which his hell-governed arm hath butchered. dreams. It's a lullaby in its way. The elevator train drives everyone insane, but I don't mind, oh no. When I bring back boys, they can tolerate the noise, and that's okay, because I never let them stay. Jenny's Ian. We were best friends in the eighth grade. I know. Whatever. So, in the eighth grade, I was dating this guy named Kyle, and he was so gorgeous and hot, but Janice didn't like him. She was weirdly jealous of him. Like, every time we would hang out, she would be like, why are you not answering my calls? And I'll be like, why are you so obsessed with me? So then for my birthday, which was an all-girls pool party, I said to her, Janice, I can't invite you because... I think you're a lesbian. And then her mom called my mom, and it was so stupid, and she dropped out of school, she caught her up, and I guess now she's on crack. Oh my gosh. I love that skirt. Where did you get it? That's the ugliest skirt I've ever seen in my life. Please. 
quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. It is twice blessed. It blesseth both him that gives and him that takes. Tis mightiest in the mightiest. It becomes the throned monarch better than his crown. His scepter shows the force of temporal power where it doth sit the dread and fear of kings. But mercy is above this sceptred sway. It is enthroned in the hearts of kings. Tis an attribute to God himself, and earthly power doth then show likest gods when mercy seasons justice. What? Oh, it's been, it's been years. I, I don't remember dates or decades. I just, I just live. <laughs> But I do remember three fabulous sessions with the Derek Saretsky. He taught a combination of Stanislavski's sense memory with Meisner repetition technique. He would go, oh, Olga, let's go to Moscow. And then I would go, oh, Olga, let's go to Moscow. And then he would go, oh, Olga, let's go to Moscow. And then I would go, oh, Olga, let's go to Moscow. And then he would go, Oh, 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 God, let's go to Moscow. And then I would go, oh, 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 God, let's go to Moscow, 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 Moscow. I, I'm, I'm sorry, this is sounding incredibly false as I'm saying. It would make someone think that I'm not quite fit to be in the Three Sisters, and maybe they would be right. Nah. <laughs> I am perfect for the three sisters. Uh, let, let's talk about something else, why don't we? Uh, hey, Sonia, what's good with you? I keep having this dream. I'm in some kind of desert and it's full of slate, ash, and dust. And I hear Scotty calling my name. So I run after his voice until I get upon this big river. It ain't like that shillin' that you see out there today. It's wide and deep and full of this thick, muddy water. And Scotty's on the other side and I can't get to him. It wasn't until I looked up that I noticed that Scotty wasn't alone. He was standing there with my daddy. Now, I haven't thought of Tom in years, but there he was with his mining uniform on and coal dust in his face. And I never realized how much I missed him until I saw him. And then there was Mama. She was standing there by his side with her arm around him. Now, there were a bunch of all these other people behind them and they kept shouting these things and and I couldn't hear them because the wind was blowing dust like crazy and the river was too loud. And I just knew that if I could hear them, I could knew that I was supposed to do something, but I just couldn't hear Scotty. And then I wake up.